Good afternoon, grade 11s. Well, welcome back to this broadcast, and I hope that you'll be an active learner this afternoon. Well, if you know that we're doing assets and bases this afternoon, which you'll get later in the year, but I'm going to show you of how they can probably ask these questions at grade 12 level, and you will have a lot to learn. So please get your books ready, uh, get your pens ready, get your numbers ready, because you have to contact us in the studio. But first, let me give you an overview of what's expected in grade 11 and 12, so that you can be ever ready in order to have a good pass at the end of this year. Please have a look at my screen now. Now you'll notice here that I have for grade 12, it says it's the acid base reactions that you have to know. And first of all, we look at acid base models, in other words, what type of acid base theories they are, as well as some of the terminology. And there on the screen, you'll see there is, for instance, Arrhenius' theory, the lowry bronsted theory, what's a strong weak or acid or base, and today we're going to talk about what's a concentrated acid, and lastly, what's a concentrated base. Then part two that we have in grade 12, you will learn about equilibrium in grade 12, specifically for acids and bases as well, and a new word that you haven't heard before called hydrolysis. There specifically, we're going to ask you one or two things to remember. Let's look at the screen and find out. Are you listening and are you ready? Let's look at my screen again and let's find out. Right, here we go. We're going to talk about the equilibrium expression, not today, and neutralization, neither that today, but we will refer to hydrolysis and different indicators. That's right. Those colors and changing that you've done in grade 9, they're coming back to you again. And the specific word for grade 11 and grade 12 is a new idea called hydrolysis. Then we are going to talk about the pH scale. Now, just listen to me very carefully. You have had in grade 9 some pH scale. Remember the scale 0 to 14, that's right. And if you can remember any of those natural indicators you've had, well, today we're going to talk about laboratory indicators. You've had red cabbage, etc., and uh, green indicators, which you could get even rooibos tea, which you can use as indicators. But today we're going to show you three, which we use in laboratory on, as a standard number of indicators. And under that heading, if you look at my screen now, we will do a little bit of what is that? Stoichiometry, you haven't heard it a lot about in grade 11, but it simply means comparing moles to moles. Then we're going to do calculation of concentrations, which is specifically for grade 11, and we're going to show you how to do pH calculations so that you can be ready for grade 12. Just listen to this. pH concentration is not necessarily for grade 11s, but if you are very smart, you'll take notice because... Later on, towards the beginning of grade 11, you need to know it, and you're going to learn in mathematics about log laws. But more about that later. For now, I will show you how to get there. And lastly, practicals are important. So look at my screen now and see what we do. We say that it's important that in grade 11, you start getting to know about titrations. You must take note of practical work, how it's done carefully, and then you must be able to apply the titrations you've done, apply it to new situations. Now, that is always challenging, and therefore, you need to know what is the names of your pieces of apparatus, which will ask you today one piece, a glassware. You'll have to do some calculations during a titration. You have to know what are the precautions, and of course, you have to apply all your a formula that you have to new situations. Now, grade elevens, that is a mouthful and that's a tall order. Today's question that we're going to discuss is based on a grade 12 level. So if you find it difficult, have no fear, you will get there, but I, we must set the ball rolling. We've got to have start early in grade 11. Talk about that. I've got a good piece of advice for you. Do you know that your success in grade 12 depends on how hard you work in grade 11. Yes, many, learner only, many learners only discover this in the first quarter of grade 12. Work hard this year 
and you will find your grade 12 is going as easy as a breeze. So what now? What do we expect from you? The following, that you take down our numbers, there's our website for instance, itesun.ac.za, there's our WhatsApp number in the studio, and there's an SMS number that you can use. Hey, and then I just want to say hello to someone here. I notice on the screen to my right where I can see when you send in the answers, it says here, I eat Siolise and Chlumela from Thomas and Tabeni, I take at school. He says, welcome, or someone says, welcome to him. And I wonder where the other great levels are. You've got, look again at our screen, you've got our numbers, you've got our SMS and our WhatsApp number. Please send those answers to us. Next, don't forget to go to Facebook, Telematic School Project, and then press the like button there, and then maybe you will get through to us, and I believe there's a competition running at some stage. But let's get cracking. One of the first things that you learn in grade 11 are the theories, the Arrhenius theory, where he said everything must be in water, then you can recognize it as an acid, and then later in the 1700s, we had people from England and in Sweden who said, no, 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 that theory is wrong. We need to come up with a different one, the brown state lowry theory. But one of the things that we learn from that is what is a strong asset and what's a weak asset. Here's a trick question. Tell me, you are sometimes drinking a weak asset at home. Do you know what it is? We do? You eat lemons? Well, in there, you get citric acid, which is a weak acid. Sometimes you even drink vinegar, it's called ethanoic acid, or acetic acid. That is a weak acid, and you drink it all the time. But today's question is very different. Just watch here quickly. Here is the question. It tells us that nitric acid, HNO3, is an important acid in the industry, and it's a strong acid. And you must now give a reason why nitric acid is classified as a strong acid. Now you will say, what is this? I've never thought about that. I just know that nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, and phosphoric acid, and so I can go on, are strong acids. I don't mess with those things. And my teacher's always shouting, don't pour the acid into the water and so forth. But you need to know this definition. Now, it's only coming up, yes, at, towards the end of this term and next term. So why not be a smart person and learn today already? And when a teacher asks that question, you raise your hand in the class. I hope there are no teachers around you here to see what we're doing today. Here is my answer for you before I speak to some people who are sending in messages here. Here's a diagram to illustrate what I mean by a strong acid. Here is nitric acid. HNO3, and here's the H, and there's the NO3 a part of the molecule. So when nitric acid gets dissolved, it ionizes. In other words, this molecule will split into two parts, the H part, which is H+, plus then, and the NO3 part, which is the nitrate ion, it splits 100%. In other words, what I mean by that is, all the millions and millions and millions of nitric acid molecules, they separate H to the one side, NO3. Even hydrochloric acid, H to the one side, Cl, the chloride ion to the other side. And even sulfuric acid, H to the one side, two of them, and SO4, the sulfate ion, will split apart. And then we say if all of them do it, and all those hydrogen ions can get to you and cause damage in your body, then we say that is a strong acid. But the weak acid, my corner, they don't want to split up like this. So this picture, you must always remember, this shows you that the strong acid, what do they do? Watch carefully. It ionizes completely, almost 100% in water. Can I hear from you quickly? What is a strong acid again? That's the key word. Ionizes completely. Those are the two key words. Look at the screen again, and then you must remember it. Now, we come to the second part, another idea. Now, you're going to get 
you are going to get four, five, six of those kind of definitions, weak basis, strong basis, etc. And you need to learn it by pictures. Remember, picture plus word adds to your learning very quickly. But now I've got another trick question for you that you haven't heard before, and you must know this now and in grade 12. And here is the question. Write down the name or the formula of the conjugate base of nitric acid. Whoa, now I hear some people shouting, where did we ever get this from? Where did we ever get this from? Let me show you slowly how to do it on screen. Here on the screen, we have nitric acid. Now, how do I know it's nitric acid and how do I know the name? In an acid which has three or more uh, symbols in its formula, I call the acid name from the middle one. So it's nitric acid, and acids are recognized by a proton or an H there. Because one of the theories say that an acid is a proton donor. That's the bronsted lowry theory. Now watch this carefully. We are now saying that if I want to write down the name of a conjugate base, an acid, if it loses something, becomes a conjugate base. Nitric acid will get a conjugate base, which will act like a base and not like an acid. How do you do it? You strip, strip the nitric acid from its proton, which makes it an acid. So how do I do that? Here I go. I take the H, and I remove one proton from it. One proton? What's a proton? H plus a hydrogen ion equal the proton. We remove that from there. So which one will I take? The H, the N, or the O? Of course, I'm going to take the H away. So this is what I do. I take it away from there and becomes a proton. So the plus part without the electron, it goes away. Let me re-emphasize. There's my acid, nitric acid. I take the proton away, the H, hydrogen ion away, and the remainder will be called the conjugate base. Because a conjugate base I get from removing one proton from there. Only one proton, not more. Let's look at the second part of this. So there is the leftover part, and the leftover part is now called the conjugate base. What did I say? Simply, if you're listening there in class, mister, you're not daydreaming there, then you would notice that by having acid, I take only one hydrogen away, only one, Sometimes something like sulfuric acid has two hydrogens. I take one hydrogen away. Uh, phosphoric acid has three hydrogens. I only take one hydrogen away, and that will give me the conjugate base. Let's look again to make absolutely sure. So, I do have the acid, remove one hydrogen, and then I call that part that is left without the one hydrogen, I call that part the conjugate base, and I write it down as NO3 because they said the formula or the name, and the name is the nitrate ion ion because it has a charge. That one also has a charge. Now, you must say that is not the easiest of things. No, that's so easy. Just chop off one hydrogen. Now, if you're still listening, we've got a grade 12 question for you. But I want to show you a secret of how to do it. So when you get to grade 12, easy piece, you say, and then you can do it. But first, let me quickly look at my screen this side. Someone says, welcome, sir. And I wonder where this person is from, which school I'm trying to get in there. Now, let me see if I can get there. Yes, I can. And I see, let me pick on there. Yes, I see. It says, welcome, sir, but it doesn't tell me where the school is. And then someone sent me an answer there. Oh, it's King Trouble from Thomas and Taba. What is an acid according to the Lowry Bronsted theory? An acid is a proton donor, you clever dude. And then he gives me an answer and he sends me an answer. He says H plus and NO3. Who is that? Who is King Trouble? Why don't they get your real name? But fine, that's okay for now. And then I have someone else who sent me an answer here and tell me that an acid ionizes completely in, in water. And this is Welcome Temba from Stutterheim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we in those places of the world now? 
Chamber, welcome and thanks for a good answer. And then I have someone says, let's get it going. And someone is writing here for me and tell me that the answer is the nitrate iron. Well, how many clever people are out there or what must I say? But I've forgotten we must all do lots of work today. And here's a difficult one coming up. Let's look. Now, this question says that we have to calculate the pH of a 0 0,3 mole per cubic decimeter nitric acid solution. And now you're going to look at me and say, where did I last year in that in grade 10? Think back, third term, grade 10, acid spaces, concentration C. That is what that blue stands for. Look again, and then I'll guide you through the question. 0, 0,3 mole per cubic decimeters means it's N over V. So C is equal to N over V, which gives us the concentration. So that is the concentration. And now to make life easy, if I go to my data sheet, which you will see in front of me on the whiteboard here, quickly have a look. On that data sheet, if we zoom in in it, we will notice that there is my formula which says C is equal to N over V, which is my mole per cubic decimeter. All right, thank you very much. Now let's get back to our screen there so that we can take this further. So from there, I now write down on that same data sheet, there is a way to calculate pH. There is a way to do it. But first, some study tips, which says that you must always use your scientific calculator well. I, do you know what? I walked into a class the other day, and the learners didn't know how to use their scientific calculators. Oh, but ask them how to use their cell phones, and they will be easily do that. I know you're smiling, but use your calculator every day, practice, and then... In grade 12, you will get your log laws to the right-hand side, but that's not so important today. We just want to tell you that there are four log laws, and you must know when it's a base, a power, and a number, but that's grade 12 work. Now, when I write down the formula for this, this is how I write it down. Just watch. From the data sheet, I get the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydronium ion or hydrogen ion concentration. What is that one? That is the hydronium, I-U-M, means positive, hydronium ion concentration, and the pH is the negative log of that concentration. And there is my concentration in the acid, that means the hydrogen concentration. This is another way, this is hydrogen plus water standing here, and I get hydronium ion. Okay. So now, pH. What is pH? Our pH is a scale, you remember, from grade 9, 0 to 14. And it tells us how acidic or alkaline, that is right, a substance is. So, oranges are acidic. Lemons are acidic. But handy, and in my kitchen, and ammonia, they are bases. And so is my magnesium salt, or if you will, Mm, all kinds of salts in the kitchen are really bases, that's right, except a few of them. But I have a formula now to determine just how acidic or basic a substance is. And that is the formula, grade 12 formula, pH is equal to negative log. So what do I do? Simply take that, that is the concentration, the square bracket stand for concentration. If I simply put 0, 0,3 in there because that is my concentration. So I could also read pH is a negative log, log on my, on my calculator. I can press the button, and then I say the concentration of the hydrogens in there. But perhaps I must just say something about that before we actually do it. Just look at my whiteboard quickly, and I want to show you something. Just here, down here quickly. So I say from my data sheet, Sheet pH is equal to the negative log of which concentration? These brackets mean concentration. Which concentration? My, if I write it at the top, H plus plus H2O. Those two together give me how many H's? Three H's, you're right. And how many O's? One. 
and I mustn't forget that it's a charge, and that is why I write it like that. Okay, and now simply I put my 0, 0,3 in that one's place. That is what I'm going to do now. So let me show you quickly how to do it, and I want you to copy it while I have it on the screen. So there is my calculation. Just watch. pH is equal to the negative log. So please be very careful when you use your calculator that you actually do it properly. Just watch the screen. And then we find that we put negative log 0, 0,3 in there. And then what I do, I keep the negative and that log will appear on the inside, and then negative multiplied by negative gives me the 0, 0,5 to positive answer. So, how do we do this? We press negative log. Just watch this carefully on the board here. So, I'm going to press the negative sign up there. That's right, the negative sign up there. And then I have to press log of a number. So if you look carefully, you'll notice that here I have log in there if you watch it. And then all I do is I press 0 0.3 if you will. And I close my bracket again and I get my answer of 0 0.52. There you see how it's done. Right. So negative at the top, not minus, but in the bottom. That's how you need to do it. Grade 11s, are you okay? Look at my screen again to see what we have on there and how you go about it. So, what must I remind you about? What must I remind you about? That you need to put that 0, 0,3, which is the concentration, comes in that bracket or in this bracket, and you put it in round brackets because you're now doing mathematics. The square brackets is also mathematics, but for us in chemistry, it means concentration, and that's how we do that one. Okay, so everybody is very happy, and now you see the massive problem that's coming up this afternoon, and I must show you quite a few things. One day, hopefully, you'll become a scientist, and then you're going to work in a laboratory with a white coat on, and then you must do purity, or you must find out what's the formula of something. Let's say you want to become a forensic scientist. Or let's say you want to become a chemical analyst. That's right. Or organic chemist. And then you need to find out the purity of a substance. Now, I used to work in a laboratory, and this is what we used to do all day. Now, just watch what the plan is to solve this problem. They say, if you go back to the screen, that laboratory technician wants to determine the percentage purity of 4,5 grams of magnesium oxide. Now this is what we call a level 3 to level 4 question because now you must figure out a way of how I'm going to get there and what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to do a quick summary of what I'm going to do and then we're going to do it. How's that for smartness? So you take note. You can write down the steps we're going to do it and then we actually do it together because somewhere along the line I'm going to catch you. But before we do it, let's just see if there are a few more questions. I see there's Tabang who sent me an answer there. Tabang, I don't know where you're from. You never showed me where you're from, Tabang. Uh, someone says he's enjoying the lesson. And someone asked me, aren't we talking about nitric acid? Why isn't there NO3 minus? Oh, yes, we've done that. Thank you. Someone says enjoying the lesson. Someone says, good afternoon, sir. I see. You are moving too far, too fast from someone from Sandy Seaway. Okay, I will move slower now. And I'm thinking from Zuslani. Yes, that's right. And then someone asked me, why does the pH value have, what is that? Why does the pH value have no units? Oh, it's simply a scale. It's simply a scale of 1 to 14. It doesn't have to have units. It's simply a scale to give us some indication of how strong or alkaline it is. And then someone is still typing, and then someone will send me the answer. Someone says his name is Legend Spoo. Hey, Spoo, Legend, where do you get that name from, and what makes you a legend? That's my question. And he says they have no values. Thank you, Spoo. And so forth and so forth. So I'll come back. 
I'll see, wait, wait, let me just see what the bang said to me. The bang said he's from Limekaya High School, and the answer is 0, 0.52. Now that is a scientist in the growing there. That's all I can say about that one. Right, what was I talking about? You sent me all these messages. Here I go. I think the one thing that I was talking about is magnesium oxide. Yes, my plan. I don't know what you're going to do. Keep your books and pens ready and beat these guys who send all these wrong answers to me. Let's go. One, we said we must get percentage purity. Now, this is part of the stoichiometry. Now, here's my plan. They give us some more information. They say this technician, what he does is, he dissolves 4,5 grams of magnesium oxide, that's now white powder, which I'll show you later, in 100 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid of concentration. Oh, you're going to say, ah, oh, this sounds very difficult, it's word sums, but you will notice that I highlight important things. 4,5 gram magnesium oxide, 100 cubic centimeters or milliliters of hydrochloric acid, and the concentration of the hydrochloric acid is 2 mol per cubic decimeter. Mm, easy peasy. So I've got two information, two pieces of information about hydrochloric acid. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. Yes, I can do that. And I'm going to find out it's 0, 0,2 moles. Then they tell me later on, but the hydrochloric acid is in excess. In other words, there's too much of it. So I must get rid of some of it. That green is too big. So how do I do it? I take another substance, that is sodium hydroxide, and I add it to the hydrochloric acid. And then what do I find? The sodium hydroxide will take care of the excess hydrochloric acid that was just floating around it. So this part, part of this, will mix with the magnesium oxide. The excess will just float here, and I bring in a third uh, substance to take care of the excess hydrochloric acid. And then I find the excess hydrochloric acid will be so many moles, and I subtract those number of moles from that to get the real number of real moles of hydrochloric acid, and I find that will be 0, 0,1598. And then... I do what I normally do best when I get moles of substances, grade levels. If I do stoichiometry, what is the most important idea that I do in stoichiometry? Whereas some scientists call it the quantitative aspects of chemistry. In other words, how do we count in chemistry? Not in grams. Not in kilograms, but we count in moles, correct? Yes. And once you've got the mole for one substance, by a recipe, by my balanced equation, I know how many other moles I get. So let's go over this again. So, one, I had 0, 0,2 moles of hydrochloric acid, but some hydrochloric acid was too much. Too much to react with the magnesium oxide. And then I brought in a third base, and I say, you, Mr. Sodium Hydroxide, you get rid of the excess hydrochloric acid, and there was the excess. And so now, what do I discover? Those two together will give me the 0, 0,2 moles. You get the picture? Those two together. Now I've got my moles of hydrochloric acid, and what do I say now? Well, mole-to-mole -mole ratio... And I find in my balanced equation, remember we're going to do this. You don't have to understand everything now. In my balanced equation, I find that I need so much mole of magnesium oxide. And once I have the magnesium oxide moles, I make that into mass by using a formula. And I take that mass, and that's how I do it. And then I take that mass and divide it by that like this. Right? That over that multiplied by 100, and I have my percentage purity. I know you want to give up. But in chemistry and in physics, we train people who can solve problems, who will not give up easily, who will stay till the end, who's got tenacity. That reminds me about an advert I had the other day, a new way of thinking in South Africa. I won't say what the word was, but you must be tough. So we're going to do it step by step now. Let me just summarize for you what we're going to do. 
One, we're going to take work out the moles of hydrochloric acid, which will be 0, 0,2. I can tell you what the answers are. Then we say, what? That hydrochloric acid, some is still floating in here. So how do we get rid of the float? We have sodium hydroxide. Then we find this is the number of moles in hydrochloric acid. Then we do mole to mole ratio, and we find the moles of magnesium oxide. And once we have the moles of magnesium oxide, we convert it into mass, and that's the mass we find. The new mass during reaction, and we put it over the old mass, mass over mass, multiplied by percentage, and then I get my answer. Now, I'm sure you can do it. Stay tuned. Stay with me for that one. A few more people I have to greet this afternoon. I see there is lots of new answers. Actually, someone has sent me the answer to the percentage purity. Hey? Someone asked me again why, oh, I've got answers to the question, why pH doesn't have units, and send me actually the answer of the percentage purity. I think I must find out the secret. How come this Yandisa from Greenpoint East London, how come that person has got the answer already? Is he a mind reader? Or can he actually work out the chemistry? Let's find out. I, I, I challenge him and all others to beat him. Someone say I'm a student from East London, Eastern Cape in East London, Kakamba Secondary School, and is enjoying the lesson. Someone else says the same. And good afternoon, says someone else. I'm a Leafley, I think. In Leafley. Oh, sorry. Right from Impemulelo Secondary School. I mean, drawing a lesson, but I must try to go slower. Hey, I'm so excited about this lesson in Leafley. I just want to run through it, and I just wish you would be with me. So let's go and do it bit by bit. Now, everybody ready? I'm going to ask you bit by bit to do calculations. The teachers, the supervisors, please stay where they make sure they do it and send me answers. Literally hundreds of people have sent now. Now, where were we now again? Oh, yes, we're going to solve this problem. Let's just quickly go one more time over it. One, find out how much hydrochloric acid I had with the available information. The answer will be 0, 0,2. But they tell us the hydrochloric acid is in excess, so I use sodium hydroxide to get rid of that excess. And then I find the real hydrochloric acid that is going to react with magnesium oxide. There are the two moles. Once I have mole here, no problem any further. From mole, I find mass, and that's the mass. And then I work out my percentage, which some dodgy character has told me is 78% or 87% already. Smart move, but let's see. Let's do it. Here we go. Now they say a laboratory technician wants to determine the percentage purity of magnesium oxide. He dissolves 4,5 sample into so much hydrochloric acid with that kind of concentration. And the first step, they say, calculate the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that is added to the magnesium oxide. Here's a few tips first. Right, always write down all the given information, like what? 4,5 grams. 100 cubic centimeters or milliliters of hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid has that volume. That's V. The hydrochloric acid has the C, concentration C of that. You got it? And then... You calculate the mole of hydrochloric acid, because that's what they want. And the equation that you're going to use is C is equal to N over V. So you're going to take the C, and you're going to do the V from... You get all this data, you get from here somewhere, and then you convert the 100 cubic centimeters to cubic decimeters. So that's one step. So... Are you ready to do that? I'm going to show you step by step how to do it now again slowly, and then you are going to calculate it. That's for sure. Because I can do it. You must also show that you can actually do it. And the more you practice, the better you get. Let's get going again once again. So here we go. What must you do? You must write down the given information. There we go. So we read carefully with a pencil, and we say of the hydrochloric acid, 
because that's where we want to go to. The volume is 100 cubic centimeters, so it's 100 cubic centimeters divided by 1,000 to get cubic decimeters, cubic liters. So it's 100 divided by 1,000, give me comma 1 cubic decimeters, comma 1 liters of hydrochloric acid. And the concentration I don't have to change because that's exactly what they gave me to. And now what must I do now? Now I must use a formula where I can use C and V to get N. C and V to get N. Right. So what must you do now? I'm going to use that formula as you see from the data sheet. And now you need to do it first. Quickly I'll give you one minute while I look at the screen. I'm going to leave this on the screen for you for one minute so that you can do the calculation. Work out the number of moles. Okay, I'm ready. If you are, I'm just looking at some, you can... I'm sure you've done it already because I'm looking at some of the questions here now quickly that people have sent in. And Lon Wabo gave me an answer, 0, 0.522. Uh, Tando Kazi sent me an answer. Someone from Bishu sent me an answer. Tumani Twango, Twango, Twango sent me an answer as well. And there's Phelan, Ashlume, and they all sent me answers. Thank you, everybody, for those answers. So let's see what your answer should have looked like. So here is mine. Look at that, my screen. 0, 0,2. Look carefully and you will see I use the formula C is equal to N over V. I must find N, that's the number of moles that I have to determine. And 2 was the concentration in 0, 0,1 and there's my answer. Easy does it, doesn't it? Very, very easy to do that. Now, here's another question for you about this, which you must know. Now it's apparatus time. That was calculation. Here is apparatus. Look at the screen. It says he then uses an apparatus below, and this was the apparatus that he used. It is a glass piece of material with a stopcock there, and we find that there we have numbers on it, uh, graduations we call it. And the sodium hydroxide goes in there, and hydrochloric acid here to get the excess hydrochloric acid. And now they ask about Q. They say, write down the name of the apparatus Q in the diagram. What do we call this glass apparatus that we measure one of the chemicals with an iron acetylobase? What do we call it? I think you need to write that down. Remember, you must do experiments. But what's important, you need to write down for me what's the answer to that. Anybody who can shout? I can't hear you. I haven't seen an answer. Someone give me the answer yet, and I'm looking. Not yet. Here's the answer coming on the screen for those that don't know. And I want you to write it down, please, because sometimes learners misspell this in the examination. Here we go. It's called the burette. There. That is what you had to write down. Now, you must know your apparatus. That's what I'm saying. You must know how to do experiments. You must... Pester your teacher so that you can do the experiments. Don't blow up the school, because that's what most of you want to do. And also, watch your teacher doing demonstrations, and then you'll find it will become very easy. Now I must move on, because I've got 10 minutes to go, and then I must come to the real problem that you must be able to do. Here's the next question. Next question says, if I have three indicators, which one must I use in this case that I'm working? And I'm going to explain something. This indicator here, methyl orange, I use when my final result, when my final mixture of acid and base is acidic. This one is when it's neutral, and I call this indicator, it will show green when it's neutral. I call this indicator bromothymol blue. And this one here, the phenolphthalene, or phenolphthalene as some people call it, yeah, I will use that when my final solution of acetone base is alkaline. And so, it is important that you know your indicators. So, which one will be most suitable, A, B, or C, for what I'm doing here today? What am I doing? I am adding 
an asset plus a base. Here's an asset, there's a base. There's a weak asset, there's a base. There's a strong base and a weak, sorry, there's a strong asset and a weak base. So which one am I doing this afternoon now again? Oh yes, I was adding sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid. So I have a strong acid, that's why I wrote the capital A, plus a strong base, and then my pH will be 7. Now which one of these will give me a pH of close to 7? Which one is that one? Any mini, mini, mo? No, that's not what we do. We say strong acid, strong base, the pH is equal to 7. But if I have a strong base and a weak acid, my pH will be greater than 7. And I have a strong acid and a weak base, my pH will be towards the acidic side, less than 7. Now, what do I see here now? So I'm doing that one. So, right, so that means I will have to use B. That is correct. And how do I write my answer? I say which one do I choose? I write down, I choose B. Why that is so? Because a strong acid plus a strong base gives me... That is all you write down. If I ask you why you chose B, I will say, I can, in my head, I can reason the pH is close to 7, in that region there between 6 and 7. And my answer must be, this is the titration of a strong acid and a strong base. If I choose a different one, I say either weak acid and a strong base, if my pH is greater than 7, like this one here, or if I have a strong acid and a weak base, my pH is lower than 7, so you must learn this table for grade 12 now already, then you'll be smart in grade 12. So how do I write the sentence? I say that I know that I have a strong acid and a strong base. But another word that you'll have to learn for grade 12 is hydrolysis, is the reaction of a salt with water. That is another definition that you have to learn. Right, let me recap that idea. So you look at that table, you see which indicator must I use. I must use the middle one, B, and then they ask you to write down your reason. Then you just look in the table and you say, I have added a strong acid to a strong base. And that is why my pH will be about 7. That's the only thing you write. Addition of strong acid to strong base. Please write it down now. Then we must get on to the next part. Very interesting part that I have up here for you. I think it's question 6.3. Let's have a look at what it is. They say during this titration, a technician used uh, distilled water. There they use the word distilled water to wash the sodium. So I use a, a wash bottle here. I use that bottle. And I squeeze some water to run all the acid and base to the bottom. And why would the water not influence the results? Okay, that I have to explain something for you. Just look here quickly. In grade 9, you had this idea that uh, an acid gives us protons, and the base gives us hydroxide ions, and then I form water from that. So that was called neutralization. Now when I add an acid, I use an A here for acid, plus a base, then I find I form water. So if I add water to this, this will not affect this, because water can't change this. Are you getting the idea? Water can't change that. And that's the reason I had to give here. So what reason do I give? What's the reason? The reason says that the end point when my indicator is going to change color depends on how much hydrogen ions and OH ions are there, but not about how much water I have. It only depends on the acid and the base and not on the water that I add. So it only depends on the acid and the base and not how much water I needed to, to, to clean out or to rinse out the acid and base. So how do I write my answer? I say the number of hydroxide ions remain constant or the number of hydrogen ions remain constant. Okay, 
So now we have our assets and bases, and now I think it's about time that we work out the excess of the hydrochloric acid, because I already know how much hydrochloric acid now I must find the excess. Let's look at the screen. Now they say, at the end point, and I want you to read it. What happens at the end point? 21 cubic centimeters. Notice, notice the numbers, volume, concentration of sodium hydroxide. Now I must calculate the moles. But this should be easy, but give you a tip first to help you. One, what must I write down, do you, do you always know? Info, what info? Volume, concentration. Volume, concentration. What must I work out? The number of moles. Calculate the number of moles. Please do it quickly before I actually show you what the answer uh, looks like. Everybody just have a quick go at it. How do you do the calculation? Write down that first and put in your values. Don't forget to convert that first. Huh? Let me give you some more tips for that. The volume is 21 divided by 1,000 cubic to make cubic decimeters. And my concentration is 0, 0,2. And then you should have this answer. Right, do you have it? The mole of sodium hydroxide is C times V. It's 0, 0,2 for the C. And 0, 0,021 for the V. And there is my amount mole of sodium hydroxide, or which is really the moles of the hydrochloric acid, which is in excess. Okay. Are you getting it? So I put in a certain amount of uh, sodium hydroxide. It neutralizes everything. And then I find out if I have so much sodium hydroxide, then I must have so much of hydrochloric acid in excess that was lying in the beaker all the time. Okay. Now, the next part of the question tells us that we need to know certain stoichiometry for grade 12, I'm just going to show it to you quickly, and then we're going to finish the last part of what we have to do. Here we go. So, we now say that you have to calculate the percentage purity. And there's the formula, but that's not important. What I want to show you is that in grade 11, you must do one, two, three, four, five kinds of stoichiometry. That means mole-to-mole -mole calculations, other calculations in grade 11 that you have to know and that you must be able to do. Now, let's quickly round off the last part. The last part says, if I have this balancing formula, and I know the following, at the beginning, I had 0, 0,2 moles of, that is, hydrochloric acid. And then after that, I found that I had so many moles of excess hydrochloric acid. How much hydrochloric acid do I have now left over? And here is the answer. I simply take this 0, 0,2, I subtract that amount from it, and this is the hydrochloric acid I have left over. You getting the idea? And that hydrochloric acid is the number moles of hydrochloric acid. I am now going to use that number of moles by using this formula, and I'm going to find out how many moles of magnesium oxide I have. Now, what, do I, what am I trying to tell you? Let me quickly just show you one more time what am I going to do. I am going to say if I have magnesium oxide and I add that to two moles of hydrochloric acid and I know this one here, then I can easily figure out that one there. Why? Because they are in the ratio 2 is to 1. Are you getting the idea? So if I have, for instance, if I have this, as 0, 0,1958 moles. If I have that as moles, then I simply divide that by 2 to get there, and then I will see what my answer is there. Does everybody understand that? So I have a ratio. If this is 2, then what is 1? If that is 2, then that is 1. If this is 2, then what is 1? That is how I reason, and here I go for it. Look at my screen. So... I say I must now find a balance from the balanced equation. I must say, if I have 
two moles of this? How do I get to one mole of that? And here is what I do. I do it this way. I say that the moles of magnesium chloride or magnesium is and water is on that product side. But that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about this one and two. So I say the number of magnesium oxide to hydrochloric is one mole is equal to two moles. That means magnesium oxide is half hydrochloric acid. Of course, one is the half of two. So magnesium oxide is half the number of moles of hydrochloric acid, which is half of that number up there, which is half of that. And this is the magnesium oxide which I have. Okay, let me write that again for you on my table this side, then maybe you can see. So I'm saying if that is 1 is to 2, and I know already, if I know what is my hydrochloric acid, then I can say the number of moles of magnesium oxide is half the number, because 1 is the half of 2 is the half the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid. And that is half of, how many number of moles do I have now again? 0, 0,1958. That's right. And if I divide that by a half, I will obviously get 0, 0,0979 moles. That is what I did there. And now just to take it one step further, I now say I have the moles, right? I have the moles, and I'm going to use this formula, and I can get the mass. You see there? There's my number of moles. Now I must just get the, the molecular mass of magnesium oxide, and then I can get the mass of magnesium oxide. Smart, smart. Isn't that so? Let's quickly look at how we do it. On the board, here we go. We find that that is my number of moles of magnesium oxide that I have now in front of me, and I cannot easily work out from the number of moles what is my mass. Here we go. So now we know we got that kind of moles up there. We know we've got that kind of moles. So what do I do? I turn the moles into mass by using this formula here, this formula here. There's my moles. There's my molar mass, which I must work out now, and then I can get my mass. So let's do it together and see how I do this. This is what we do. We take the formula. There we go. We take the formula. We write down N is equal to 0, 0.0979, and M, the molar mass of magnesium oxide, is 40. How did I get 40? Magnesium is 24, and oxygen is 16 on my periodic table. So that gives me 40, and there's my grams. And now I go for the last step. So that is the mass of pure magnesium oxide. That is the original one. I use those two numbers. I take that one, divide by that one, multiply by 100, and I have my percentage. Here I go. So let's do it now. So the percentage purity is there at the top, which is 3,916, remember? And what was the mass at the beginning? 4,5 multiplied by 100%. And there I have my answer. And there you have it. 87. The person who sent me 87 was absolutely correct. Okay. In one minute. Here we go. What did I do today? I said I found the original hydrochloric acid. Then I found the excess hydrochloric acid. Then I find the mole-to-mole -mole ratio between hydrochloric acid and magnesium oxide. When I had the moles of magnesium oxide... I found the mass, I used that formula, I got an answer in that formula, which was 3,916 over 4,5, and I multiply by 100, and there's my answer for you. What are we doing in October? Just the following. At 3 o'clock, we'll talk about redox reactions. Good afternoon, everybody. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you.
Walls Metrics 2021 Catch-Up is brought to you by the Department of Basic Education, NECT, ETDP CETA, SABC, MultiChoice, and DBE TV on OpenView Channel 122 in partnership with 